Hey everybody, what's going on? It's Misty Hino with Misty Hino's Lego Robotics. I hope you guys had a wonderful Christmas. I sure did. It was just a really nice time of the year. Today's video, I'm going to be talking to you about two missions. If you guys are still competing with City Shaper, two missions that you guys have to do if you want to win your robot game. If you want to hear about that, stay with me. Now, Mr. Eno never wants to be in a position to say you must do something that's not fun and you guys have the ability to do whatever you want. So this is just Mr. Hino's opinion, just something to put into the back of your head going, hmm, okay. And also remember that you don't have to win your robot game to win the entire thing. It's just something to think about. Now, I've been to a lot of competitions this year and I've also been able to see a lot of videos of how teams are scoring in their robot game and so i have two missions that if your team wants to just eke out ahead of the next team and get that higher score i've just noticed two missions that your team should really really consider doing all right so the first one is going to be the elevated places let me go ahead and show you um if you are still new or you're just trying to uh, you know get in touch with all the missions again let me go ahead and show you the whole thing of elevated places check this out yes oh check that out so there's different ways to score with elevated places you can just get your robot on the ramp for the 20 points. But I believe the key to winning your robot game are those flags at the top. Two of them are 15 points a piece. So that's 30 points plus your five if your robot, you know, passes inspection. 35 points that we can add to your robot score or your robot game score to just give you that extra edge to your team. So, you know, if you think about it, you know, you're, if you get the whole thing, let's say your team doesn't even try elevated places. Now we add in those 20 points for getting on the ramp. Your team could be getting 55 points if your team's not even considering doing the elevated places. So I just know that, you know, teams are going to be doing all of their design and build. They're going to be doing their swing, their elevator. So there's just so many missions that all the teams are going to do. And I think it what separates the higher or the top team is going to be the team that does those elevated places points another mission is that i feel is super important that your team if again wants to get to that higher you know level just looking down at everybody is going to be the crane now i know a lot of teams lower the blue unit and, and like the elevated places getting those 20 points i believe the higher top teams are the ones that are getting the not only that blue unit to drop but they are swinging the crane over dropping that blue unit on top of the lower one that's already there on the mat and pushing it into that circle okay here we go we're gonna swing this thing over lower it onto the blue this Okay, so let's go ahead and break down these points. We get 20 points for lowering this uh, blue unit from the crane, 15 points for stacking it on top of this blue unit, and then we get an extra 15 for having both of them be inside this blue circle. So that would give us 50 points. So if you think about it, it's the same thing as the elevated places. There are 35 extra points if your team is just dropping it and getting those 20. There's an extra 35 points because it's 15 to drop the blue unit on top of the lower blue unit. And it's 15 also extra to get into that circle. And then five more points if your team passes inspection. So there's another 35 points your team could be getting if you're just 
getting the 20 points for lowering, you know, the blue unit. So if you add all this up, guys, that's 70 points that your team could be getting if you're not, you know, doing those missions. So I believe the top teams are the ones that are either doing one or both of those missions, you know, the extra parts to get those extra points. So, you know, I'd be the last one to tell your team to like, you know, totally change everything, especially if your team is in, you know, a good rhythm and you guys know what you're going to do. But if your team is just looking to be like, you know what, I know there's something extra we can get. I would consider either going to the top part of the bridge to get those elevated, you know, the flag points, either that or swinging that crane over and dropping that blue unit on top of the lower one and pushing into the circle. I believe those are the two that really separate the top teams from the teams that are just, you know, just wondering in that third, fourth, fifth place, wondering how they can get those extra points. Also, you might consider the safety factor. You know, if you can get one, two, three of those blue bars, you know, that's 10, 20 or 30 extra points also. So you can consider all of these things if your team wants to try to get to that top robot game score. Okay. I hope you guys are still having fun with City Shaper, guys. I am Mr. Hino from Mr. Hino's Lego Robotics. I'm out.